thank you for coming always appreciate it, especially before holiday um, the great crowd today the students came out even though school is getting ready to empty out and appreciate that very much we had a good team win today everyone contributed you know a lot of respect for NJIT I love their coach um, they had the fifth leading scorer in the country I thought we did a really good job you know um, taking care of him and making a long night for him. He's really talented. He scored 35 and 30 in his last two games. Uh, but I just like the way this team is starting to defend and they play together. And, it, you know, it was Miles and, you know, Knight tonight and uh, Ron and obviously Gio. Uh, but every night somebody different kind of chipping in, and I love that. You know, Miles has been in foul trouble. To keep him involved today was a great thing. And, uh, you know, just very thankful for the, for the good win that we had today. Steve, when, when your offense is running inside out and Miles is playing like that, what does it do for the rest of the team? I mean, I thought we got out and ran today. I thought we got good looks, and then we were able to throw the ball into the post to all the guys, you know, that, that, that came into the game. And, you know, Ron gives you another dimension in the post. I think a quasi can post too. But, you know, keeping Miles out of foul trouble, I thought huge. Um, I love the fact that our two guards had 12 assists and two turnovers between Gio and Pauly. You know, they're sharing the game. I love the fact that we had 22 assists. That's what happens when the ball goes inside, um, you know. So good things happen when you know everyone touches the ball, and everyone you know plays team basketball. And I thought we had that today. Steve Brown was just saying that you guys brought more pressure after those uh, first ten minutes, and were pressing them a bit more, and that affected them. What adjustment did you make? After yeah, that? I mean, I just thought we you know attacked them a little bit more. I mean, the last 10, 10 minutes and a half, they only scored four points, so we gave up eighteen early. You know, I didn't like our detail, you know, in those things. But I think we pushed it up. We got the ball running up and down. We made some adjustments not to get backdoored. Um, you know, and I thought our guys are getting stuck with the plan. The guard is really good. He's been playing great basketball. I thought that was the key the whole game. It kind of made it tough, you know, for Cooks to, to, to get good looks. And, um, you know, he's an important part of their offense. I thought these guys took the game plan. You know, Coach Haynes did a good job and, and his prep and took the game plan and, and, and executed it. It's a good sign. But you said after last game it was good to get some downtime there. How much did that benefit you? And what was that prep like? Today? Yeah, I mean, we got a couple days, you know, just to prepare, you know, for for what's ahead. And again, we got a quick turnaround here coming up with, with UMass. So, um, anytime we get some days off, we could put in some new actions. We could do some different things defensively. And plus, you got to give them, a, you know, NCAA day off too. So there's always days off for their bodies and stuff. But I thought we had some good practices leading up to this, and I think our guys are kind of locked in. Steve, you, you ran different guys at Cooks. Would you have a deep backcourt? How much of that is going to be the strategy against the top guard you'll see this year? Well, I mean, we're going to see some great guards. So I, I think any time you can, you know, take a guy that's been a vocal, uh, very focal part of their offense and kind of throw different looks at them. We have length. We have some speed. You know, Gio got him. You know, Jacob Young got him. Did a real good job. Caleb with his length. Montez, you know, Montez started on him. I think whenever you can keep throwing different bodies at guys and fresh bodies, I think it makes it difficult. Um, he saw a lot of different looks, you know, and, and, and that's what we wanted him uncomfortable. I thought he was uncomfortable most of the night. See, before the game, you, you embraced Pat Hobbs. He, he hired you for the job. What do you want to say about him and his week when he's been in the spotlight? You, you know what? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, and I appreciate you even asking me. Pat Hobbs is by far 26 years of doing this job. I've worked for I don't know, eight, nine, ten athletic directors, by far the best I've ever worked with. Um, he has done so many things in my three years here for, for Rutgers. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I don't know, it's a very difficult job anytime you're an athletic director, a head coach. You know, it's, you know, there's a lot of agendas. Um, he has been for the student athletes, he has been for the coaches, my staff, um, the players in my program, um, you know, built new buildings raised a hundred million dollars. I mean, I think what people forget about is all the great things, and we're so into the negative, and then, they, no, this guy's great, and he's a great person, and, you know, the stuff needs to stop. He's done a great job, and he's, he's gonna go down as one of the best athletic directors Rutgers has ever had. And I hope you print that, and, and quote me on it, and understand um, the job that he has done in the last four years, there hadn't been a new building built here since 1977. We just got into the best league in the country. Um, some teams in this league have been in this league for 125 years. We just got in this league five years ago. 
And when I took the job, um, I said, Pat, you know, we're in the best league in the country. He goes, I know we are. And we're in the best league academically and sports-wise with traditions and all those things. And we're going to stay the course, and we're going to continue to build programs. And he certainly has done that in so many ways. It's very unfortunate that, um, you know, the narrative has, you know, completely changed. Um, these, these are very, very difficult jobs. He has a lot of sports that he has to think about, and there's a lot of issues that people aren't talking about that he also has to make decisions on. Um, and when you're dealing with uh, these kind of contracts, there's a lot of things, um, you know, that could go, go wrong. I know when he offered me the job, I reached over the table and I shook his hand. I don't think we ever talked about anything other than I want the job, and I'm very fortunate and blessed he gave me this opportunity. This is an unbelievable university. I think you guys need to understand, it's one of the best academic institutions in the country. There's so many good things going on here at Rutgers. Academically, my son's a part of this freshman class. It's the most competitive freshman class ever to come into Rutgers University. And academically, buildings are being built. It's the toughest time to get in here. We play in the best league in the country. And you know, I'd like people to start talking about that. And I'm honored, I'm honored to be here at the school. And I'm honored to work uh, under a guy like Pat Hobbs. So I'll go to war with him any day of the week. So we'll uh, end it there, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Great.